the angel comes and says, to be a DJ, your pops is going to have to go to jail for 20 years. You'll grow up without a father, your mother may go crazy over the issue, but are you willing for your mother to be in the insane asylum and your father to be gone 20 years, but you will become that DJ you wanted to become? Now you got to sit back and say, do I love this enough? Do I love this more than my mom's? Do I love this more than my dad? Do I love my dad more than this? Where's my heart? Ooh, where's the heart? Where does it really lie? Because the study of hip hop will show you that you love your mother more than hip hop, and that's good. The study of hip hop will show you that you love hip hop more than your mom's, and that's good. The study of hip hop will show you you never needed that job, that's good. Or, you do need that job. That's good. But the study of hip hop is going to bring the real you out. The real you is going to have to answer some real questions that deal with the nature of your soul. Not whether you can rap. Rap is, that's the effect. We'll get to that later. We talk in hip hop, for real. Before we even was able to rap, we had to answer these questions first. Had the angel came to us in 87 and said, listen, KRS, you'll be the greatest MC ever. <laughs> but Scott LaRock got to go. Yeah. I don't know what I would have said. I'm just bringing that to show you the harshness of the question. <laughs> I don't know what, I, I probably would not be here right now. If the angel came right now, or then, in 87, and said, look, this guy right here, he gonna get shot and killed, but his death is gonna propel your career. My principles won't allow it, so there'll be no KRS. That's it, just that quick, just that simple, just that, just, just like that. And this is the part to the scholarship right here. Don't think about the stars that you do see. Think about the ones that you don't see. The decisions that they had to make that said, no, I'm not giving up my, my people. I'll sit here. I'm the greatest MC, but no one will ever know because I refuse to work for MTV. I refuse to give my video to BET. I refuse to be on this sellout radio station. So now you're not, you're not her. Heard. While the person who says, but wait, Master Charlie, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Master Charlie, I'll dance for you. <laughs> this is hip hop scholarship. Not the people you see. Where's all the people you don't see? And can you imagine who they were? What their lives was like? The sacrifice they had to lay down for everybody that you do see? What you see is 1% of what hip hop actually is. It's like 1%, all the stuff, everybody in the history of all hip hop is still only like one, maybe 2% of all of hip hop. Maybe. So here comes the scholarship. First, you gotta change your consciousness. How you looking at hip hop? How, you, how am I looking at it? Am I looking at it through the eyes of MTV? Or am I looking at it through its own eyes, which is me? I'm looking at it as me. I'm, I'm looking at the mirror, basically. I'm looking at the mirror. Or am I looking through MTV's eyes? now? Here's the, here's, we already know the difference in that. But here's the scholarship on it, which is important. Who, if you're trained by a murderer, chances are you'll be good at murder. You may not know it, but if you're trained by a murderer, you're gonna get murder techniques. Even if you study in math. The murderer is teaching math. You're gonna learn how to kill them numbers. <laughs> If you're studying with a liar, a, a deceitful person, you're going to learn how to bend the facts. And 
even if you're studying chef, you're studying culinary arts, uh, you're a chef, but you're studying under a liar, someone who themselves is a deceiver. You watch the person lying all the time, but this person is going to teach you how to cook. So they teach you how to cook with the lie in it. Uh, this is not really salt, this is... <laughs> oh, this is not really sugar, this is. <laughs> well, it smells like coffee, but it's really. <laughs> so you get these little techniques because the character of the person is basically what it is. Well, when it comes to scholarship, if you're trained by a colonizer and an invader, huh. everything you learn has the colonizer and the invader's way in it. You learn according to the character of your teacher. <laughs> Just get the information. You get the teacher's character too. Now, I mention this because this is that part of scholarship that many people can't go to because it's brutal. But I know you can handle it. And so here it is. All, damn, did I say that evil word all? I'm generalizing. It's something you never do in scholarship. <laughs> all, all of public education in the Western Hemisphere is a lie. All of it. All, 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 all. A L L. All. Every. All. Okay. All of it is a lie. Here's how I can say that. Because the basis of, and I'm going to call it Western. Only for the, because that's what it's called in, in, in their books. There's a difference between an Eastern thought and a Westernized thought. The Western thought's more logical, subjective, uh, and this kind of thing, even colonizing and invading. But that's not the truth about Western thought either. That's not the truth of uh, European parts of Asia, Indian thought. That, that's not the truth of it. That's just what's in the book. But I, for the sake of this discussion, um, I could say trained by a corporation or trained by culture. In the book, it's Western education versus everyone else's model. Or, or Eurocentric education versus everyone else's model. We don't need those words. The more accurate word is cultural and corporate. This is the, word, this is the better word to use. Because all Europeans, like for instance, all Dutch, all the Dutch, did not enslave Africans. That's a lie. In fact, the first, the Portuguese, that actually came from Portugal, the first Portuguese were actually just trading with Africans. It really had a robust trade going on for like 200 years. See, we're in 2013, so 200 years, like, oh, two days. No, 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 try to imagine what 200 years is like. Okay, <laughs> the Portuguese, the Dutch, all of these Europeans, were actually trading with Africa and doing good business. Good business. It's the Dutch, the Portuguese, the French, the English, and the Spanish that came after. Like a hundred years after. Two hundred years after that started the history that we all know of today. Mm. Europeans keep invading Europeans. This is European history, this landmass, this landmass that we're on. One guy rises up and another one wants what he got, kills him, then someone else wants what they got. This is European history. One guy knocks off another guy, knocks off another guy. France with England, England with this with Spain, Portugal, everybody fighting over the riches coming in from Africa. Everybody want to dice up Africa. Everybody want a piece of Africa, hmm. including the African herself. There you go. Everybody want a piece. Now look at the history you're studying. Look at the nature of your teacher. The nature of the teacher that we're learning. Public education, corporate education. Invade, colonize, settle on places that are not yours. And learn. Objectively, those are the natives, we are the whoever's. <laughs> then look at this, the objectivity of it, or actually look at the objectivity. You, this is, this is towel and chair and microphone. 
I am at the podium, speaker. I am separate from this in every way, shape, and form. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to learn of this, either I learn it like this from a distance, well, it's white, it looks like a fuzzy material. Mm. It could be, I'm not touching it, I haven't smelt it, nothing. This is objective learning. I'm looking at this and I'm forming my understanding of this based on my observation of it. This is science as well. Science is an observable, you know, you, you have to observe nature and you have to be able to repeat your observations in order for them to be scientifically sound. So something to be science, your, your objective opinion has to be able to be repeated in nature. This is insane. This is insane that you would base knowing on objectivity. The original way was that, I don't know what it is, Let's find out. <laughs> ah! Well, it feels this. Uh, it goes over the back. Uh, it's this. As a matter of fact, let's eat it. <laughs> now we know what it really is. <laughs> now, when settlers came and first saw great civilizations in full swing, they were first in awe of it. First, everybody writing their diary. It was in all these great civilizations. They came out, they gave us gold. They gave us rubies, pearls, so they just gave it to us. They fed us, they clothed us, then we robbed them. <laughs> You're not hearing the history. Is it? They gave us everything. But that wasn't enough. We had to now go and rob and subjugate the people who are giving you something. Now, those people are now learning public education. Your ancestors got public education. Public education is, you remember how you used to go over to the palm tree? And you used to go up to the palm tree, you used to know how to climb the palm tree, get up there, you knew what coconuts to get, what bananas to get, you, could, you knew it all. Now, you don't know any of it. There you go. None of it. <laughs> you are a natural human being. Natural. You are a human. You are natural to the earth. You're created by the earth. But if somebody dropped you in a forest right now, you die in two days. <laughs> Scientific, by the way, you have 48 hours to live. Drop any modernized human in a forest, and though not a jungle with his real animals walking around, you done in two hours. <laughs> in a forest, just a forest. Okay, they got stuff walking around the forest, but you can live in a forest, you can get up in a tree in a forest, there's lakes and streams in a forest. You got 48 hours, maybe three days as a living, breathing human being. This is public school education that takes your reality and puts it in their world. The Matrix. <sighs> Don't go there yet. <laughs> Stay plugged. <laughs> this, your, the reality, and I want you to see this, I gotta go slow. Your reality what you perceive as what's possible, what is possible for you, your reality, is based on colonizers and thieves. You have to capture knowledge. You're not the knowledge that you know. You're not what you know. What you know is separate from you, and then there's you. There's no reason for you to know you. Public education, it's you gotta know me. So my whole reality is outside of myself. It's all objective. It's nothing subjective. I'm feeling nothing. I'm getting nothing. No soul, no, no feeling, no nothing. Just do and be, do and be, do. And this is how we live it, just like this. How did we get here? It starts when you're real little real small and it starts off when you're vulnerable 
and a person's telling you, well, like, you know, in America, it's George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I was on a cruise ship coming here from Miami. And on the cruise ship, they were playing Lincoln. And I thought to myself, I was like, wow, we don't land in Amsterdam. What do they need to know about Lincoln? Abraham Lincoln. Now, sure, you may want to know Abraham Lincoln's story. It's a fascinating story in American history. Yes, it is. But really? What do you need to know about Abraham Lincoln? There's really, there's really no reason whatsoever. I can make it more palatable here. Okay. You are all familiar with Lil Wayne. Uh, Drake. Uh, everybody. Why did, okay, you are you all familiar with Wu Tang and Farrell March? Why do you need to know of any American artist in your country? Just stop with that. Just think about this one. Yeah. What do you need to know of KRS? But you're in an entirely different country. You speak another language. You got the culture right here. You got hip hop on you right here. But for some reason, you need to know about KRS One, Public Enemy. This, this is American indoctrination. <laughs> Don't let America through hip hop take your mind. A true hip hop scholar is not interested in KRS One. A true hip hop scholar is interested in themselves. I am from here. This is where I'm from. I'm going to talk Dutch, and I'm going to rap in Dutch. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you a Dutch version of cutting, mixing, and scratching, and really try to bring it new. Try to get some, to some international something, the DMC, something where other nations are around, and go, now watch the Dutch get down. This is how we do it. <laughs> what honor you bring to your people? What honor you bring to yourself? And then others around the world get to look and be like, wow, that Dutch shit is hot. Yo, look how he break. Look how she's going down. Look at their rhymes. Yo, I need to take that back to Brooklyn. Yo, look how the Dutch doing it. Yo, we need to go to Miami with that. Yo, look how the Dutch doing it. Yo, me here in Hong Kong, I, I could feel that. <laughs> but as long as we are all saying, well, Nicki Minaj did it that way, so that's the way I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Oh, well, KRS, he did it this way, so that's the way I'm going to do it. Uh, Africa being butter, uh, uh, public enemy. No, 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 he got it wrong. He got it twisted. Sure, a good study of KRS's history is fascinating. And you all should get yourselves a copy of that history. <laughs> but when we're talking scholarship, to know my history before you know yours, just take that in. To know my history before you know your own history, you're going right back to the colonizers' way of thinking. Hip hop don't need that. We don't speak in language, we speak in art. I know exactly what you're saying if you go like this. Grab the steel. Yeah! I know exactly what you mean. I ain't got to speak Dutch, you ain't got to speak English, we ain't got to speak Korean. Yeah. Grab this, get on your back, get that wall. I know exactly what you're saying and we can communicate. So why do I need to know this one's history, that one's history? Well, because me as a person may just want to know. You know, I'm hearing, in, like, say, reverse the, 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 the symbolism here, KRS. Why do I need to know Dutch history? I don't need to know Dutch history, but I'm in, I'm in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. I'm in Amsterdam. So if I'm in Amsterdam, why wouldn't I just go to the new museum y'all just built two weeks ago, slide up in there, and see what people are talking about? This is Dutch history. I like history. I just like history. Me as a person likes history. So when I'm in an area, I want to know what's going on. Hey, this is what happened. This is what's going on. What's the newest knowledge? Things are getting changed. Let me check that out and stay updated. That's me. When you come to America, you may feel the same way. Who knows? But the bottom line with hip hop is, you enter these countries first, knowing who you are. First, first, I have the courage to be me. And I have the courage to be me all the time. 
one thing that was aggravating for me up there, looking at the, uh, the women in hip-hop panel, was that it was mostly in Dutch. Um, the women were speaking in Dutch. <laughs> oh, I think that's what it was. <laughs> um, and, um, of course, I'm up there like, huh, huh? What did she say? And, but it makes me as a scholar go, uh, you know, what's, what's that word? What's that word? She keeps saying this word. What's that word? And other Dutch scholars up there are saying, this is what that means. And this is what this is. She, 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 she just said, and da -da 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 -da, like that. Now me, I get to write that down, take that back home with me. Had everyone spoke English here, I would not learn Dutch. The fact that everyone was speaking Dutch, I can't understand most of it, but I can apply my intelligence and learn the key words, words that I didn't even know. I now know them now and I can leave with a piece of paper and say, okay, da 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 da. Maybe I can even order myself something to drink now. You know, mm -hmm. you know. Did you remember one? Which is? I don't know. Did you remember one? No, no. Oh, 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 one of them. No, I didn't. Of course, I wrote. I wrote. I wrote down in in, in my bag. I, my scholarship is short right there. Um, but I guarantee you, when I come back, I will be. Uh, I, you know, I'll be able to say so. No doubt. Um, but. I just want to show you this real quick that even though it may have been uh, uncomfortable, not even uncomfortable, just I, I couldn't understand what was being said. And someone was up there telling me, even though it may have been difficult for me, the learning process is always difficult because you don't know. So if you are a scholar, meaning someone who's trying to know something, what you're interested in is the original version of the person you're talking to. You don't want to bring your culture from somewhere else to this culture and say, now you guys got to talk like me, dress like me, act like me for me to understand you. That's the thinking of a colonizer. That's the thinking of someone who invades something and don't care about where they are. They don't try to blend in. They don't have no respect for where they are. They just want to exploit and use. So if you just want to exploit and use people, you get somebody to say, look, I'm not interested in learning Dutch. Just tell me what they're saying in English. <laughs> oh, well, you're not even interested as the way you are. Now, there's a bunch of so-called rappers <laughs> that come to the country and do just that. And this is the difference between hip-hop scholarship and every other scholarship that I can think of. I don't know anyone any scholars that approach people the way hip hop approaches people. Mm. We have a unique way of uniting with people. We don't just come and say, you gotta be like me. We just come and say, what do you do? I'm a b-boy, right there. So I know what you do, and I know the dopest of your group, and I know the wackest of your group. Where do you fit in? <laughs> Not, um, what are you, you black, uh, you white. Uh, you this, you that. That's, that doesn't even exist in hip hop. What exists in hip hop is uh, you break, uh, you write graph, uh, you DJ, MC, uh, you. Uh, that's what exists. I say it all the time. The only place that you see Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the only place you see Dr. King's speech, the I Have a Dream speech, is in hip hop. Yep. Americans are always, Dr. King, there ain't nowhere in America Dr. King dream is. Nowhere in the United States. <laughs> and I will challenge the world on that too. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in the world do you see this part um, where my children uh, will one day grow up in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin or by the content of their character. That's nowhere on the globe. Nowhere. The only place you see that actually happening, like actually going on culturally, is in hip hop. This is the only place in the world. See, this, you gotta understand these new facts. This is not my opinion. These, this, these are the facts. Nowhere in the world do you see Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech where you're not really judged by the color of your skin. You're judged by the content of your character. That's all hip hop. That's all hip hop. Now everybody, Africans got problems. Asians, Latinos, 
neighborhood. You go to any race, any culture, any ethnicity, they all got problems with each other. Ain't nobody looking at anybody based on the content of their character. No race. None. Nobody. The only place on earth that you see a culture, world culture, people doing the same things wherever they are, and not judging people based on color, but based on the level of your skill in these elements. What we were just talking about is hip hop scholarship. I just want to get out the way. What is a hip hop scholar? How do you think as a hip hop scholar? First, you don't think like a colonizer. You don't think like someone who's invading cultures and then studying them objectively. Any culture you enter, you try to become the culture. You're hip hop all the time. To be a hip hop scholar, you have the, the courage to be hip hop all the time. This is what you rep. It's like a doctor who finished medical school, but because the society doesn't like medicine, then he says, well, I'm not a doctor today. I'll be whatever you need me to be. But you are a doctor all the time. You study medicine, you love medicine, you heal people, this is what you do. But just imagine the society says, well, medicine is not it. It's only gonna last three more years. And you a medical doctor, so somebody's sick on the side, and you just say, well, I, right now I'm lifting boxes for Mr. Charlie. <laughs> man get hit over the head with a box. You a doctor. I, oh, I just can't. People don't like doctors around here, so just go ahead and bleed to death. I'm going ahead with Mr. Charlie. And you bleed. That's what we're doing as hip hop scholars, if there are any. This is what we're doing. We see the injustice in society, but because we're working for Mr. Charlie, we don't talk like hip hoppers in the university, at the job on the radio, in front of the television, whatever it is, we're not talking like that. We're hip hop only when KRS comes. Or when Wu-Tang is giving that concert. <laughs> or when so-and-so, blah, blah. You can't call yourself a scholar then. Because you're not, you're just, you're, you're a learner. You're someone who likes hip hop, but to be a scholar, an expert of it, you're that all the time. All the time. I had a ball coming here on the ship because I'm 6'6 six, six in height. And the <laughs> little white people on the ship, uh, old people, <laughs> uh, they was like, you're so tall, are you a basketball player? <laughs> I love it. I said, no, I'm with the FBI. <laughs> No doubt. I switch up titles all the time. I call it a cultural anthropologist. Oh, I'm a philosopher. Oh, I'm this. I come up with all kinds of titles because they're only coming off of their stereotype, tall black man, you gotta be a basketball player. Mm -hmm. You know. But rather than go into, well, let's, why are you calling me that? Just, I'm comfortable with who I am. So, you must be a bastard. Oh, yes, I am, and I'll dunk on you right now. Come on. Sometimes I'll be elbowing him in the audience. Come on, let's go. Post up. Post up. <coughs> but you find that you, 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 you dig into a person's heart when you don't assume right at the top, oh, it's racism, it's sexism, and classism, ageism, whatever it is. We have a tendency to leap with our emotions first. And scholarship is very emotional, but you've learned how to control your emotions. Not emotionalist, because you'll be a dead person if you have no emotions, you have no soul if you have no emotions. No feeling for some, no empathy for anything, you have no soul. But that same empathy, that same connection with another person can get you in trouble compassion for the wrong people, trusting of the wrong people, because your soul is full of love and compassion for all humanity, everyone else is not. Hip hop scholarship has to be quick and seize through quickly. What's real and what's fake, quick. Let's go deep now into this. Hip hop. Now that you are a scholar on hip-hop, meaning 
you are hip hop. You're not studying it objectively. You're not looking at hip hop and studying it. You are the culture itself. I am just one part of the culture speaking to the other part of the culture. If anybody was to look at us right now that didn't know this was hip hop, they could not tell you from me, we're all here together. This is one culture speaking to itself, sort of like a planning meeting. I am not the exalted KRS-One because I'm not above you at all. We talked about this a little earlier, I'll reiterate it right here. If you think for one minute that I am somehow better or more than you in hip hop, you flunk the test right then. You're not getting one of these. <laughs> if you think for one minute, what you must now begin to think is, KRS is just the hip hopper that came before me. That's it. That's it. Not KRS and I'm who I am trying to be. I'm who I am trying to get to where KRS is. You're going to destroy KRS. Because I am hoping and relying on someone younger than me to do what I did better. Better. Show me something I've never seen before. Don't show me me. I don't want to see me. I got enough of me. I want to see you. I want to see hip hop in other forms. And this is what we always wanted to see, hip hop. Imagine if, when I put out the South Bronx, if I waited and said, well, this doesn't sound like what Grandmaster Flash and Melly Mel did, so yeah. I'm just gonna take my career and fling it in the toilet. No, 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 no. I came out, I shouted the ancestors. Way back in the days when hip hop began with Coke Rock. Cool her, and then bam, B-Boys ran to the latest jam. When it got shot up, they went home and said, damn, this is the history. I shouted the ancestors first. On the other side of town was a kid named Flash. Patterson and Millbrook projects, Casanova's all over. You couldn't stop it. I'm shouting out the people in my neighborhood. Before I come out, I'm shouting the ancestors first. Then I came out. That's when I came out, I had the respect from day one. The minute that record came out, everybody that I mentioned in the record was like, yo, you got it, man. Yo, you got it, man. Yo, yo, yo. And why? Because this is an ancient technique. I'll give it to you now. Anytime you shout out your ancestors, you are more than the person that didn't. Anytime you start, find an ancestor. Just said it ain't one time. Malcolm X now, let's get it popping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just find someone to say, could be your parents, grandmother, grandfather, somebody you really respected in your community uh, as well, or in your family that wanted to see you make it. Somebody shout them out real quick. Yo, this goes out to Aunt Betty. Nobody know who Aunt Betty is. <laughs> but you didn't know who Old Dirty Bastard was either. You didn't know who any of these people we shot. Yo, my man Pookie and that. You... Imagine, you don't know any of the people these people are shouting. But yet, we would rather repeat the names of other people's ancestors and friends in our home. This is the scholarship. Change your thinking. You are hip hop right now. Now, what you got to do is study yourself. Yourself is another version of hip hop that we need. Mm -hmm. We need. We don't need to regurgitate the same old thing. We don't grow like that. We need something new, fresh. Here's another way to do it. Here's another way to look at it. Let's advance the culture. Hip means to know. It's a form of intelligence. To be hip is to be update and relevant. Hip comes from the African hippie or hippie cat. It's believed to come from the Wolof language. Hip, from hip, or what is called hippie cat, or hep, or heppy. Heppy is older than hippie. Heppy in the Wolof language means one who is aware of his environment. Heppy, to be hep.
This comes out of the Wall-Off tribe, or at least it is believed to come from the Wall-Off tribe. Hip then, uh, as I said, enters jazz, a form of knowing. If you look in the dictionaries, hip means a keen sense of knowing. Uh, most people attach it to fashion, a keen sense of fashion, or some will say a keen sense of what's new and in style to be hip. But they're scholarly, like if you look at the Oxford English Dictionary, hip is a form of awareness. It means to be, it means to have information, to know something, to be up on something, to be hip to something. Hop is a form of movement. Hop, you can either go up like this, or you could go like this. <laughs> the, the, the hop, like that. Hop is fleas hop, ticks hop, birds hop, kangaroos hop. Hop is a form of movement, either jumping up or springing forward. When you look at the terms hip and hop, just what the terms mean, we're not getting philosophical yet, just the term hip hop. Hip means to know, hop is movement. Awareness, movement, consciousness, and movement or action, intelligence and action, activity. So hip and hop or hip hop means conscious movement, intelligence or awareness, moving, leaping, springing. I'm hip to my hop. I know why. I move. I'm conscious, hip, to my hop. My movements, I'm aware of what I'm doing. I'm deliberate. This is what hip hop means without anyone's opinion or anything, just the term hip. Surprisingly enough, this term hip and hop is what we're actually doing in society. What we're actually doing in nature. Hip hop, intelligence springing up, consciousness being awake and moving on your awakeness. I am aware of my movements. Hip hop usually has three spellings. All cultures are spelled leading with a capital. Hip hop is also a proper noun. It is a specific thing. So you spell it with a capital H when you are spelling either as one word, the collective consciousness, or as two words, hip hop gets two H's. This is also the phonetic spelling of hip hop. This is how hip hop comes out of your mouth. Hip hop, that's what it looks like. This is the culture. That's the culture. Whenever you're spelling hip hop and you're referring to the culture of hip hop, you spell it like this. You can spell it like this too. But this is the scholarly approach when you're talking specifically about culture. If you're talking about collective consciousness, things like feeling hip hop, the love for hip hop, um, that the vision of hip hop, you spell it in this way. Anytime you're dealing with consciousness, immaterial things, non-material things, this kind of thing, you deal with it up here. Here is where this is still immaterial. This is still non-material, but you can see hip hop now. Now you see it through breaking, I'm seeing graffiti on DJ, beatbox, and fashion language knowledge and entrepreneurial skills. You see it now through the culture. Finally, when the culture is moving and in order, it produces products. All cultures produce products. Tell a different story about yourself. The things you have, like for instance, the clothes on your back right now. Go home, take them off, and never wear them again. Put them in some sort of a, a frame and, and with a picture of us today. Uh, and put that in the frame and make a big thing of your pants and your shirt, or just your shirt, or just a hat, and put it in a frame and say, this was the hat I wore at the historical hip hop event. Put it in a frame, tell a story about it, crack the frame, say somebody tried to rob me on the way out. <laughs> and you know, have a story about this picture. You can do it with any material item in existence. If you can see this, you will see how rich you really are. 
Everything in your environment has value. What doesn't have value is the person holding it. 